Oh, hello there, Johnny Reb. If y'all keep hollering like that, you're fixing to get shot, Billy Yank. Oh, geez, Louise. At this range, you got a smooth bore, don't you? Now, is you saying I can't hit you from here? Oh, yeah. You've got to be a hundred yards away, and everyone knows smooth boards are totally inaccurate at this range, don't you know? Now, you just wait one cut picking minutes, sir. Uh. Old Scarlet O'Hara here might be a little old, but she'll drop you like a sack of savannah grits at this here distance, sir. Uh. Yeah, no, yeah, that's not what the YouTube comment said, and everyone knows the best source for history facts are the YouTube comments. Only the history experts right there, you know. And they say the smoothbore, beyond 100 yards, no good. For Pete's sake, you'd be better off with a stick. Now, just what tarnation is a YouTube? Is you telling me more of your Yankee lies? We don't cotton to your Yankee lies this side of the Mason-Dixon, sir. Oh, you betcha, and I've got a rifle. So much better than the smoothbore. I could hit you from here. Hey, keeps the riffraff out, I always say. Riffraff? Now, I have tried to be reasonable with you, Billy Yank, but now you have besmutched the honor of the Confederacy, and I am losing my patience with you rapidly, you Yankee invader. Oofta, you're darn tootin' I besmirched you. I'll besmirch you, I'll besmirch Granny Lee, and I'll besmirch the rest of your army, you smoothbore totin' rebs. I'm not afraid of you. In fact, I bet you this can of Ludafisk, you can't even hit me from there. How dare you threaten me with that vile dish, sir? It is banned in our Southern Confederacy, and now I take no pleasure at all in delivering unto you the righteous vengeance in the form of buck and bowl that you so clearly deserve. Prepare to die, Yankee. Hi, I'm Brett, a YouTube pseudo-expert from papercartridges.com, and today we're going to test whether or not the smoothbore musket can hit a man-sized target at 100 yards, and we'll see if our Yankee with a really bad Minnesota accent uh, will make it unscathed uh, to the end of this video. And I'm about to show the range time of the Model 1842 smoothbore at 100 yards. Can we hit a man-sized target at that uh, range? But this video is also... A little unusual. This is a reply to a YouTube comment, and I don't typically give negative YouTube comments that much attention, but uh, I think this response will be useful uh, to reply to because it does address a fairly deeply held misconception, at least in the United States, particularly here, uh, a misconception that the smoothbore musket is just worthless at anything over 50 yards. Like, you can't hit anything with it at 100 yards, uh, and the rifle is just so much better. So here's the comment that I am responding to uh, made on my video on the influence of the rifle musket uh, in the American Civil War uh, from a few weeks ago. And there's a few four-letter words uh, in this comment, so fair warning about that. But here's the comment from, uh, from Todd. And he says, I would be the last person to defend History Channel documentaries as they were more often than not rife with bullshit. But so was your video. You talk about the effectiveness of smoothbore muskets but mention very little about accuracy and limited range at which they were effective. For example, hitting a man-sized target at 50 yards is easy, but by 75 yards it's getting dicey, and by 100 yards it's a total crapshoot. To which I replied... You can put a ball from the Model 1842 smoothbore into a man-sized target almost every time, if not every time, at 100 yards. And I also mentioned uh, that it's kind of ironic that I'm here defending the smoothbore musket because I've argued for the effectiveness of the rifle musket over the smoothbore. Uh, in fact, that's the subject of my book, uh, The Destroying Angel, which is a deep dive into how the rifle changed infantry combat. Uh, even into this era, we're still living in the rifle era of uh, infantry combat. And uh, our friend Todd responds, look what happened to the Russians armed with smoothbore muskets in the Crimean War when they went up against British and French soldiers armed with rifled muskets, LOL. 
And a quick aside, uh, most of the French in the Crimean War were actually still armed with smoothbores, a little ironic considering the French invented the Minier rifle, but they were still predominantly armed with smoothbores. Only their elite units had rifles and, and they were uh, TJ rifles. Anyway, but yeah, I cover the Crimean War in the first three chapters uh, of my book. And the, the very title of my book, The Destroying Angel, comes from a British reporter who was at Anchorman, uh, and, and he observed the long-range British rifle fire at Anchorman, uh, and it was hitting the Russians, as he put it, like the hand of the destroying angel. So he's, he's reaching back into the Bible, actually, to the book of Second Kings in the Old Testament, to borrow supernatural language. The enemies of ancient Israel were struck down by the hand of the destroying angel in uh, the second king's account. And so he's, he, he's never seen anything like this before on the battlefield. Russians going down at 600 yards and it looks like an invisible hand is knocking them down. Um, so, uh, and anyway, the trained soldier with a rifled musket is unquestionably superior to the soldier with the smoothbore. And that's been <laughs> my argument. But Todd thought it would be helpful to uh, inform me about uh, the Crimean War. But he continues, now go along and write another book, which I, I'm doing actually. Maybe you can title this one, Yanking Shit Out of My Ass, The Ramblings of a YouTube Pseudo Expert, LOL. So in the words of Jack Binney, well, um, at least most social media comment arguments on Facebook and YouTube or whatever, there's no way to scientifically prove one side or the other. But my friend Nick has a Model 1842 smoothbore that I could borrow. I make the smoothbore ammunition for the Model 1842 smoothbore, and the generous taxpayers of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have a range just up the road that I can go shoot at. So let's go shoot it. I'm glad you came out with this stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. We needed more, we need people. Oh. going to get so unbelievably filthy. Oh, it's great. Last up. You need to go down? Yeah. Just look at the recoil on that Model 1842. That is, that is a lot of power. But then again, I'm just a YouTube pseudo-expert. So, yeah, who knows? Oh, it's fantastic. It's like a, like a whole other state we're in or something. You got up this morning. Oh, this is my first wrestling bag. <laughs> I just remember I'm a, uh, I'm a pseudo YouTube expert you, and I'm pulling aiming out of my ass. There is no aim. I'm aiming at that white target mass blob. Okay. Try to aim in the same spot each time. <laughs> aim. Yeah, I aim. Yeah. That one hit the ground and bounced up and hit the lower target, but it's all jagged. Hey, that counts. <laughs> <laughs> that, over the Nexus study, absolutely counts. Three guys with three smooth boards yeah. firing volley fire at a target to see what would be the effect of the volley. Oh, yeah. 
Can we use the rifle one because it's still under At a hundred yards, it's a hundred. So musket shot in in the at 18th and 19th centuries, especially in a naval context, musket shot is considered 300. Like that's the extent of musket shot. So we have this bizarre American myth that at a hundred yards you're can't hit anything. I don't, I don't understand it. So that hit low, bottom target. About four inches almost off the paper. Off the paper? Four more inches have been off the paper. Well, there's also um, one possible explanation is these are pure lead balls. Yeah. Historically, they're not, they're, they're using whatever lead they get. Yeah. Uh, That'd be even more inconsistent then. Yeah. Well, the balls would have been lighter, so the velocity would have been higher, all that stuff. Okay, so that's top target, top, bottom of the top target. But you know what? It's staying, it's staying up yeah. and down, yeah. yeah. But it's not, not too divergent. No, right. no. Total crap shoot at 100 yards. You can't hit anything. That's what the YouTube comment said, and everyone knows that is the uh, the true dispensers of wisdom in the world are are on YouTube comments. shoot off the rest a little bit. Yeah. Well, even, well, even when I'm shooting... we're behind shooting. some breastworks or something where you could actually lay that rifle in and... Uh, that's bottom target too, yeah. So even when I'm shooting rifle offhand, I occasionally miss one. Yeah. Like, this is not bench rest <laughs> precision shooting. Um, especially if you're not even really aiming. I'm not. I'm just putting that front sight post somewhere on that white blob and pulling the trigger. This is... Well, it's actually still doing pretty good then. Yeah, size bottom target to the right. Alright. So... Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, that one was already there. That's a rifled slug from someone before. So. I shot three times and that's my grouping. Oh yeah. So seven out of eight and that eighth round, who knows, I might've pulled it. Well, seven out of eight is almost every time so uh, I think this, uh, this is plus one for the uh, pseudo expert. So I, I might have given away the results uh, by having the, the target here next to me. But um, at, at 100 yards, there is no question that the, the Model 42 smoothbore will... I'm a little bit, a little bit wider than the average Civil War soldier, but... That's, uh, you're not having a very good day. So uh, even on this one target, there were six holes and seven out of eight at 100 yards. Uh, and from time to time, shooting offhand, I'll even miss at 100 yards with a, a rifle. Um, and to address some of uh, maybe the YouTube, uh, <laughs> the YouTube hecklers, I was not using the modern Lyman 662 musket ball, which is more accurate. There's less windage. I'm using 110 grains of Swiss 1F powder uh, with the 0 .650 musket ball, the actual regulation sized musket ball. Um, and I'm also not really picking on Todd here, uh, maybe a little, but uh, I think this is a good 
uh, experimental archaeology into the smoothbore musket and its capabilities. Now, hitting a man-sized target at 100 yards is is not super impressive. I mean, it's it's good enough. Uh, 18th, 19th century sources considered musket range, uh, depending on what source you looked at, generally about 150 yards. And in fact, the muskets, uh, European muskets, were often sighted for 150, 175 yards. That was the limit of musket range. The Royal Navy, it was 300 yards. Musket shot was 300 yards. But so they hit a man-sized target at 100 yards is everyone in the 1830s, 1840s would have been absolutely unsurprised with the results of this test. They wouldn't be looking at each other thinking, what kind of freakish level of accuracy is this? Uh, but today we, we're stuck with this misconception, especially in the United States, uh, that the, the rifle is so much better than the smoothbore, which I agree with, wrote a book about it. But we shouldn't malign the smoothbore down to the point of saying it's really only good out to 50 yards. It, it, it is more capable than that. So with that said, uh, we should probably go back to the, the banks of the Potomac picket line and see how our, our soldier with the bad Minnesota accent is faring. You're just gonna waste your powder. You're actually gonna try to shoot me from here. Oh, for Pete's sake. You're not